video, we're going to talk about the three ways that you can increase pressure in a closed piping system. Specifically, an irrigation or sprinkler system is the context that we're talking about here. And there's only three ways of doing this. So I'm going to cover the ways that you can increase pressure. And then I'm going to talk about some of the misconceptions about water hydraulics and the reason that I've created this video, because I've heard some things said by several different people. And I'm not looking down on anybody. You know, I started off in the irrigation business with zero training, with zero education. So I made some mistakes and made some improper assumptions about how water behaved. And I had to go and get some education and teach myself otherwise. So hopefully I'm going to clear up some stuff for you here. The very first way that pressure is increased in a closed piping system, a plumbing system, an irrigation system, is by heat. Now, heat doesn't have any really application to the irrigation field, but it's a way that pressure does get increased in the lines. If maybe you're from the north or from a colder climate, you may be used to boiler systems. And boiler systems not only heat the water up for hot water consumption, but it also raises the pressure. And in some taller buildings, that's used to increase the pressure to get the water up to the top of the building. But like I said, that doesn't really have much application for an irrigation system. The second way that you can increase pressure is through a pump through a mechanical means. Now we're looking at a picture here of a lake pump, but the setup is basically the same. The piping is the same, water in, water out with a centrifugal pump or another style of pump that increases the pressure in the lines. Now, if you're looking at a system set up maybe under a house or something, don't get confused by the, the pressure tank. The tank itself doesn't really increase the pressure in the lines. It just holds some pressure through the use of an air bladder inside the tank, that along with the pressure switch, so that as you know, you're know you getting a little bit of water out of the tap or flushing a commode or whatever, that the booster pump isn't kicking on and off all the time or cycling as it's called. And if the pump cuts on and off too many times, you're going to wear it down and, and decrease the life expectancy of the pump. So the tank setup along with the pressure switch kind of helps mitigate that and keeps the pump from coming on and off. But so, you know, the pump is a mechanical way of doing it. And the third way of increasing pressure in a closed piping system is through the use of elevation. Now, your water supply system that you know supplies water to your house or your business uses two things. They use pumps, but they also use water towers. They use elevation, which increases water in the lines. It's gravity. It's the weight of the water itself. And we're looking at a, a tank here that's in Greer, South Carolina, you know, just up the road from where I personally live. And in this section of town where this particular tank is, it's in an elevated section of town. And I've been told it's a long way away from the nearest pump station. And they had really low pressure there in the immediate area. And I know that for a fact. I've installed some irrigation systems around that neighborhood that's right by that tank. So they did have really low pressure before they put this tank in. So what you're going to get from elevation is that for every foot of elevation or for the weight of water for one foot of water in a pipe is 0.433 pounds per square inch. Now it doesn't matter the size of the pipe, whether it's a one inch pipe or it's a 10 inch pipe, it's not cumulative for each square inch inside the base of the whatever size pipe, it's you're gaining 0.43 per square inch. So when you're looking at a water tank here, you know, that tank may be 60 feet up, so they're getting quite a bit of additional pressure that's pushing into the lines and pushing water through. And so also in an irrigation system, you may experience some elevation loss or some elevation gain in the system itself. Let's say a zone goes across the top of a hill and then the, the pipes, you know, take a turn and go down the hill a good ways to a head down there. For every foot of vertical elevation drop, now it doesn't matter if it's at an angle or the length of that pipe at an angle, you really measure it a straight up and down elevation drop. For every foot that that water goes down that pipe vertically, you're going to pick up 0.433 pounds per square inch or pounds of pressure in the line. 
And the converse of that is true also if the pipe goes up a hill to a head up on top of a hill or, you know, just up a slope, you're going to lose 0.433 pounds of pressure in the line for every foot that it has to go up that elevation rise. So the reason I'm making this video is that I've heard some people say some things and recently I was in one of my supply warehouses, you know, picking up some sprinkler heads and um, there was a guy there buying some parts. And I heard the clerk behind the counter say, hey, man, I, I see that you're getting three quarter inch parts and I've never seen you buy any one inch parts. Is there a reason for that? And the guy said, yeah, I do all of my customers a favor and I always size all the one inch stuff down to three quarter inch to give them more pressure in the lines. So, you know, obviously my ears perked up and, you know, I kind of said, well, what do you mean by that? He said, you know, when you go down a pipe size, you're squeezing more pressure through the lines. I'm sorry, but that is just not true. And that's, you know, I know he's probably seen something and maybe he's made repairs where he fixed a leak or maybe he straightened out some, you know, zigzagging pipes and took, so, you know, several elbows out of the equation and recouped some pressure that was already there. But he's certainly not going to increase the pressure or add any pressure that's already there. When you start off an irrigation system or a plumbing system, you're constrained by the amount of pressure that's there at the meter or at your connection source. Unless you put a booster pump or you have some elevation drop, you can't add any more pressure into that system by sizing down. And I've installed a lot of booster pumps for houses that were up on hills and so forth. So I know there's no tricks, but let's talk a little bit about the water hydraulics of this. And if you're confused by these issues, I have a free course online. You can go to ProIrrigationTraining.com and get a link there to the course. It's called Introduction to Irrigation and Sprinkler Systems. And I go through a great bit of detail about water hydraulics specifically for irrigation technicians so that you can understand at least the basic hydraulic concepts and not make some mistakes as you're out there fixing pipes and so forth. So let's take an example of you're making a repair on an irrigation zone, a zone of sprinkler heads. You're there somewhere close to the, uh, the beginning of the zone near the valve, and this is a, uh, a zone of one inch piping, and you've got a demand out in the zone of 14 gallons per minute. Let's just say that you have four heads on that zone, each with four gallon per minute nozzles on it. It's 16 gallons per minute demand. That means when it opens up, the system is trying to, to deliver 16 gallons per minute to all four of the four gallon per minute heads. Okay, so with PVC pipe, we, we try to measure or we try to constrain the velocity or the speed that the water is going through the pipe. Because in the, inside the pipe itself and inside all the fittings, there's turbulence, there's friction that's happening. That water is picking up friction as it goes through and that friction scrubs pressure out of the line. It takes energy away from that water. So for 16 gallons per minute in a one inch piece of class 200 PVC pipe, that's the thin walled irrigation pipe, basically the, the velocity of that is 4.78 feet per second. With PVC pipe, we want to keep it below five feet per second. And above that, the friction loss starts to increase exponentially. So our friction loss per 100 feet of pipe. Now, it's, now obviously, you're not probably going to be replacing 100 feet of pipe, but I'm just giving you this as an example of what's going on. The friction loss per 100 feet of pipe is 3.38 pounds per square inch per 100 feet of pipe. Okay, so let's say, you know, by the example I gave you, you know, we took that one inch pipe and replaced it with three quarter inch pipe, thinking that we were adding pressure to it. So what's happening there for the same 16 gallon per minute demand, our velocity is now at 7.88 feet per second. That water is really moving through the pipe, trying to supply that 16 gallon per minute demand out there. It may not supply it all because it really three quarter inch pipe is rated for up to 10 gallon per minute flow. And then above that, you're getting into those really high delivery rates. You may still get that amount of water through it, but it's moving so fast 
that it's scrubbing energy out of the water. And so the friction loss on that is 11.44 pounds per square inch per 100 feet of pipe. So 3.38 PSI loss per 100 feet of pipe in the 1 inch pipe versus the 11.44 loss in the 3 quarter inch pipe. So that should tell you that, you know, going down a size of pipe is going to harm the system. It's not going to help it. It's not going to add pressure to it. It's going to take pressure from it. It's going to cause water to move faster through the pipes to try to deliver the same demand, and it's going to rob energy out of that lines. And so, you know, I, I questioned this guy further about, you know, why he thought what he thought. You know, and I don't, don't try to condescend to anybody or talk down to him, I, you know, try to help somebody out here. And like I said, I, I didn't know. I had to go out and spend a lot of money on some education to figure some of this stuff out for myself. And that's the reason I've created these videos and these courses is to give you a very budget-friendly way of coming up to speed as an irrigation technician. But the example that most people use, and I think what throws people off, is the example of a water hose, right? You know, let's say that on the back of my house, I have a hose bib and I've got a 45 uh, PSI pressure reducer in the house. Most houses that have more than 45 PSI generally have a pressure reducer in there to take the pressure off all the fittings and your, uh, your water heater and so forth. So on the back of the house, I've got a hose bib and I've got a hundred feet of garden hose attached. And here in the picture, I don't have my thumb over the hole and you see water is just blobbing out maybe a foot or two foot away from the end of the hose here. So if you look at this friction loss table I have for you for 5 8 inch water hose, we see that if we're at you know no constriction on the line, I don't have my thumb over it, that water hose is trying to deliver the maximum amount of water through there. And let's say that it's, it's uh, pulling 10 gallons per minute. Look at the bottom of the chart. If it's pulling 10 gallons per minute out the end of that hose, that means it has 38 pounds, 38 PSI of friction loss through that 100 feet of garden hose. That's why the water has no oomph when it comes out the end and it's just kind of blobbing over. It's the thickest stream of water it is, but it's only going two feet you know, away from me, you know, from the hose here. But if I move my thumb over the end of the hose, as we see in this picture here, then you're getting a water stream that's shooting out 15 or 20 feet. But that's because I have reduced the flow demand. Let's say we take it down to the four gallons per minute. That means I'm only incurring seven PSI of loss through that garden hose. I'm only losing seven pounds of pressure through that hose, so that means it still has an additional, what, 38 pounds of pressure left in there. And so basically you're converting that energy to velocity there at the end of the hose when your thumb is over it, and that's what causes the stream to go out. You haven't created new pressure, you've just slowed down the water as it's moving through because it's not moving through at 10 gallons per minute. Now it's only moving through at say four gallons per minute and you still have a lot of the energy retained at the end. And so it's con the, the energy in the line in the water itself is converted to velocity there at the end and that's what gives you that stream that shoots way out. So. It's not quite the same example, but that's a reason that a lot of people get confused about pipe sizing, about velocity, about gallons per minute flow. So I really hope this has helped you. And I'm going to give you a link here, you know, to the course. So if some of this has confused you, please go over here and check out this free course. And I hope it'll clear up some misconceptions and help you to be a, a great irrigation technician.